With us now, the Honorable Karen Bass, member of the United States House of Representatives, Democrat from Los Angeles. And thank you for joining us. Thanks for Former being back Speaker on. Former Speaker of the California State Assembly. You That's were on right. here plenty of times for that. Uh, you, in your statement after the uh, debt ceiling hike, said you mm -hmm. voted for it, but reluctantly, it was no way to do business. Articulate right. that message. For Absolutely. Me. Well, you know, I mean, I thought that it was uh, critically important that the United States not, for the first time in history, default. That would have just been completely irresponsible. But part of my reluctance was the fact that my Republican colleagues really collapsed two separate issues, the deficit and the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling was raised seven times under President Bush, and this was the first time it was linked toward deficit reduction or toward uh, having spending cuts with no revenue. First time that ever happened. Is that a bad thing, though? Why is that a bad well, thing? Well, I think have a 14 it's, trillion dollar deficit. Well, I think it's extremely important to reduce the deficit. You know, I sit on the budget committee, uh, Conan, and we've had economist after economist testify before us and say, yes, it is critically important that we reduce the deficit, but you must do so with extreme care because if you don't, you will impact the unemployment. You, we have a fragile recovery, and you could literally throw us back into a recession if you reduce the deficit too quickly and irresponsibly and in my opinion that's what some of my Republican colleagues were calling for they're arguing though or some have argued that even if you got the the tax hikes that you're seeking for the for the wealthy right uh, and the corporate loopholes closed up you still will go not nearly as far as you need to in order to conquer this deficit right that's correct. I agree with that. And that's why, in terms of reducing the deficit now, separate from the debt ceiling, we have to have a balanced approach. That sound familiar? That's what we used to say in Sacramento all the time. <laughs> right. There needs to be a combination of cuts as well as raising revenue. Was this politics? Uh, I think it absolutely was politics. I think what my Republican colleagues did was they seized the moment. And, and I have to tell you, it was so familiar to me in terms of what we go through every year in Sacramento, where what happened is, is that my Republican colleagues seized the debt ceiling, knowing that it was an absolute crisis and attached onto a deficit reduction. And I think in terms of many Americans around the country, there was complete confusion. And people actually believed the two subjects were the same. Well, let me, let me read you a quote here. Sure. Quote, Washington is shifting the burden of bad choices today onto the backs of our children and grandchildren. America has a debt problem and a failure of leadership. America deserves better. That, of course, was Senator Barack Obama in 2006 when he voted <laughs> against raising the debt ceiling. Exactly. Barbara Boxer voted against raising the debt ceiling. Was that politics back then? Well, you know what? It's hard for me to say. Maybe it was politics, but let me just say that we could go a long way to reducing the deficit if we let the Bush tax cuts expire. That's a major driver toward But President our Obama extended them. Do you yes. blame him for those? Oh, no. Well, actually, you know what? Interestingly, I was there then, even though I wasn't uh, sworn into office, because my colleagues attached another issue to extending the tax cuts. They said, if you do not extend the Bush tax cuts, we will not extend unemployment. And so the president and Congress was faced with the decision. Should they actually let unemployment insurance expire for hundreds of thousands of Americans? Or do they go along with the Bush tax cut, cuts, cuts? But there was one caveat there. They do expire in two years. And so we will have another shot at it. We have that commission we talked about in the first segment with the Congress. Super committee. The super commission, super committee, six members. Yes. Um, would you like to be a member? Probably not because not you're really. a freshman, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, must tax hikes be on the table as far as your party? Absolutely. Concerned? Raising revenue has to be on the table because, again, part of what the super committee is responsible for is identifying $1.2 trillion of additional reductions, okay? So there's two uh, to reduce the deficit. There's two ways to reduce the deficit. You can cut and you can raise revenue. So I absolutely think that there needs to be a balanced approach. And it was not prohibited in the debt ceiling vote that we took. That's a week true. Ago. To his argument earlier, though, that uh -huh. you that that you reduce job uh, creation by taxing by increasing taxes. Well, you know, I, I disagree with that. Actually, if you want to talk about reducing jobs, try having devastating cuts. 
When we cut the budget in California, what did that do to unemployment? How many teachers faced layoffs? It really, if it wasn't for the economic stimulus that was passed in the first few months of the Obama administration, the economy in California would have been far more devastated. It helped us with health care. It helped us with keeping firefighters and teachers employed. Does the government create jobs? Well, the government does create jobs. However, the private sector, and we know in, in our state, in California, small business is the main driver for uh, for jobs but you know a lot of small businesses do business with the government so there is an interrelationship there and one that we cannot divorce let's talk about being a member of the house of representatives what's your take uh, having been in the california legislature having led a body of the legislature now you end up uh, a, a much larger body Exactly. What, what similarities and what's the difference? Uh, well, I do have to tell you that all of the politics around the budget, the debt ceiling, the deficit, that's identical to California. Even the Republicans calling for the ballot, uh, balanced budget amendment, one of the things that, that, that they called for in there was a two-thirds vote to raise revenue. Now, how's that worked for us in California? That's the last thing we would need in our nation. But one of the things I love about the House of Representatives, though different than Sacramento, is that there's so much experience there. Because of term limits, you know, as soon as you learn the job in Sacramento, you're ushered out of the door, right? But in Washington, people have been there for many years. And so as a new member, I feel very comfortable because there's so many people who are willing to, you know, serve as mentors and help you. My last question very quickly. You've been, I don't know how much you've watched Sacramento politics since you've left. What grade would you give John Perez, the Assembly Speaker? Oh, I'd give John Perez high grades. I'd give him an A. I think that he, just like me, faced extremely difficult t challenges. And one thing that they have going for them that, that I didn't, you know, a year ago, is the fact that you can now pass a budget uh, with majority vote. And so they were able to uh, have us not go into IOUs like happened a year or so ago. Congresswoman Karen Bass, I asked that question because of our next uh -huh. segment. Thank you very much for joining us. You're I very welcome. You Thanks for having me.